untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red deck featuring four copies of Mechanized Warfare from the Brothers War, a three mana rare enchantment saying if a red or artifact source we control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. It's a very interesting anthem effect of sorts for red spells and creatures, but it also works with our artifacts like Mishra's Foundry in the mana base, which is another great addition from the Brothers War giving our deck a little bit more late game by having an extra creature land in our mana base. Not playing the full playset because we are playing lots of red spells so drawing multiple copies of Foundry early can be a little bit awkward as you do need access to a lot of red mana. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we also have four copies of Monastery Swift Spear, another reprint in the Brothers War, and this is a staple across pretty much every red aggro deck in every format, so it's no different here in Standard. A 1-2 with Haste and Prowess, so it can deal damage early, but also scales nicely into the late game, and Prowess also works with enchantments, so it will also trigger off Mechanized Warfare, which is pretty nice. And then we also have the full set of and the festivities, which might seem like a bit of a weird inclusion, but it also scales nicely with warfare, as we can now deal two damage to all the opponent's creatures and to their face. And it's also kind of a meta game call right now, as the white soldier archetype is pretty popular, especially in best of one. And and the festivities is a great way to sweep away a whole bunch of one toughness creatures and keep attacking. Then Kumano, another staple in a red aggro decks, also an enchantment to trigger prowess. And the full set of Phoenix Chick, a 1-1 one -one with Flying and Haste, cannot block, so it's only going to turn sideways to attack. And we can also potentially get it back out of the graveyard. If we're attacking with three or more creatures and pay double red, then it will enter from our graveyard, tapped and attacking with an extra plus one plus one counter on it. And that can actually come up in this deck since we're going wide with cards like Squee, and we've got a ton of Haste creatures as well. So getting back a Phoenix Chick is definitely going to come up every now and then. And then we've got a cheap burn spell with Play With Fire, which can potentially yield three damage with Mechanized Warfare. And of course, the more copies of Warfare in play, the more damage Play With Fire can deal as well. Them also trying out two copies of a Kassig Flame Breather at two mana. A 1 3 saying whenever we cast a non creature spell, Flame Breather deals one damage to each opponent. So, much like the prowess on Swift Spear, it also works off enchantments and planeswalkers. So, it will trigger off Kumano, will trigger off Mechanized Warfare. And then, now with Warfare in play, the Flame Breather will deal two damage whenever we cast a non creature spell and will also work nicely with our planeswalker. And then four copies of a Reckless Impulse as a great source of card advantage, especially in this low curve build that has a ton of different one and two drops. It's going to be pretty easy to cast both cards we find of Impulse, can also play a lands off of it. So the longer we can hang on to Impulse, the better, since then we're more likely to be able to cast both spells. But sometimes we also just play it on turn two to maybe hit our third land drop or maybe set up our next turn as well. And also nice at triggering prowess and cards like Flame Breather. Then Lightning Strike of course another staple in red decks dealing three damage to any target also scales nicely with warfare and then at three mana two copies of squee a 2-2 with haste that when it attacks makes a 1-1 red goblin creature token that's also tapped and attacking so going wide with a bunch of red tokens also plays well with warfare and we can even get squee back from our graveyard which can also happen in grindier matchups for four mana by exiling four other cards from our graveyard as well and then uh, two copies of Chandra Dressed to Kill, which also plays nicely with all the one drops in our deck, since we can on turn three play Chandra, use the first plus one ability, adding red to our mana pool, as well as dealing one damage to up to one target player or planeswalker, which can also potentially increase with a mechanized warfare in play. And then with a uh, red mana, we can still play one of our many one drops, so that can lead to some very mana efficient turns. And then the second plus one can provide card advantage by exiling the top card of our library, and if it's red, we may cast it this turn. So that one, unlike the uh, Reckless Impulse, will not let us play lands, but still a nice source of card advantage. And if we ever get to the minus 7 ultimate, we can also burn our opponents out. 
And then our mana base, besides three copies of Foundry, also has one Crucible of Defiance as another land we can maybe channel to make two 1-1s. One -ones. Sadly, the 1-1s one -ones are not artifacts and they're also not red, so those won't synergize with Mechanized Warfare, but it's still kind of a freebie to include in a mono-red mana base. And then, of course, 18 Mountains. There's a ton of ways to approach mono-red and standard nowadays. You can go a little bit bigger and more mid-rangey, topping off your curve with cards like Thundering Raiju, which also has great synergy with Warfare, maybe even a Defiler of Instinct, so you can deal 2 damage when you cast your red permanent spells. You could include more 1-drops like Ancestral Anger to maybe pump your team, also good with Prowess creatures. You could play Voldaren Epicure, which can now deal 2 damage with Mechanized Warfare, and can let you loot away extra lands in the late game. At 2 mana, there's a bunch of hasty 2-drops as well, with Bloodthirsty Adversary and Felden, the new addition from the Brother war and at three man of course Stormseeker, another staple of red aggro decks and there's also the new dragon engine which could also benefit from the haste from Stormseeker. so that's another great pairing and the dragon engine also works quite nicely with warfare as double strike will allow it to hit for six with the warfare out and then late game we can unearth it to maybe refuel our hand so that's another card i've tried but so far i've been pretty happy with a lower curve version that plays impulse as its source of card advantage instead and also with the warfare out it's much better if you already have a bit of a board presence with a lot of one drops so you're more likely to have an impactful warfare the turn you play it as opposed to having to play warfare and not really pushing any extra damage the turn we play it and then other burn spells you could consider depending on your build include Kami's Flare, it gets better if you have Thundering Raichu to modify your creatures. There's Obliterating Bolt, which can maybe take out a Shieldred if you have a Mechanized Warfare out. Otherwise you can always rely on Rending Flame to deal 5 damage and have a clean answer to Shieldred, which remains a very big problem for these red aggro decks. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's got potential, a little bit land-heavy perhaps, but uh, turn one Kumano into a Flame Breather is a nice start, and then hoping to pick up maybe like a turn three Chandra or Squee. Mechanized Warfare, another great draw, and can hope to find some uh, card advantage with a Reckless Impulse as well. Opponent on a blue deck with turn one Delver, okay, and a Swiss Pier is a draw. So could go double one drop instead of Flame Breather since Flame Breather is not triggering anytime soon. And then the question is, do we want a larger Phoenix Chick or Swiss Pier? Yeah, our opponent's going to get a 3-2 Flyer soon, so maybe getting a 2-2 that can still attack past it is the way to go. And then if we pick up a cheap burn spell, we can maybe play it in the same turn as Flame Breather. Fading Hope's also a good one, can bounce our Phoenix Chick. So our opponent off to pretty much an ideal start. Our hand leaves a little bit to be desired. But uh, just gonna attack with all, see if they wanna bounce. And there goes the Phoenix Chick. Okay. And another Fading Hope, okay. So now probably go Flame Breather, replay Kumano. Trigger Flame Breather, and then next turn the Phoenix Chick will be a 2-2, so can attack past a 3-2 Aberration at least. Opponent considers. And yep, they can find a Tolarian Terror to play for cheap. That's going to be a pretty big roadblock. No Hot Agent this turn at least, and uh, Lightning Strike, another great draw. So play Phoenix Chick, attack. See if there's any response. And then I might still Lightning Strike the Aberration before damage. Could also just go upstairs. Opponent could have a Protection Spell for Aberration, which is a reason to just burn their face instead. And trigger Prowess as well as Flame Breather. Right, opponent's going to make it disappear, fair enough. Opponent still drops to 7, next turn we'll get another 2-2 two, two haste. But there is Hadi Jin to play defense. Reckless Impulse, right on time. Let's see if we can find some more burn spells. I'll take a Mechanized Warfare as well. 
Squee. Okay, Squee's got to be pretty good here. So what if we attack with everyone? Then Aberration can eat Flame Breather, Hoddy Jin can eat Squee, and then our opponent still takes 7. And if they don't block Flame Breather, we should still have lethal. And then next turn we could play Kumano, essentially dealing 2 damage. So yeah, that should be game over. So our opponent had double Fading Hope early on, but it kind of played to our advantage since we didn't have much else to do with our mana anyways. So there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. No one or two mana creature, but some removal to hopefully set up Squee into Warfare. Alright, Swift Spear is probably still worth playing, as opposed to keeping up Lightning Strike. Since most two drops they would play, probably still at least trade for Squee. Alright, Loam Speaker can eat a 1-1. One -one. I think we still get it going over playing Warfare, even though Warfare does mean Swiss Spear goes unblocked here, basically. If I play Squee, opponent can eat a 1-1, one -one, takes 3. Now eh, maybe going for Warfare is actually better. Now we can also maybe deal 4 damage with Lightning Strike to take out a larger creature. It's gonna be a Gala Greeters. It's your opponent on a Naya deck. Play with fire, not bad. So, do I want to maybe Reckless Impulse to try and hit my land drop for the turn? And then I can still play with fire the Gala Greeters. If I play Squee, then we let our opponent untap with Gala Greeters, which... It's not my preferred option. Could also just kill both of the opponent's creatures and attack with a Swift Spear. Which is also very reasonable. Although then I'm out of removal for later. If I can save the removal spells until after I play another Warfare, they will get quite a bit better too. Yeah, I think I try and hit my land drop here. Alright, find another Warfare. So in that case, attack with a Swift Spear. And then play with fire to kill greeters. And then next turn play another warfare. And with three in play, squeeze gonna be incredibly scary. Uh -huh, wedding announcement makes sense. Bone making some tokens. So if we can find an end the festivities, that would also be great. For now. Play Warfare before it goes away. Swift Spear attacks. Probably see a chump from the 1-1. One -one. And we'll let damage happen. Don't think I need to kill Loam Speaker even though our opponent is stuck on three lanes. So that would be a reason to still take it out here. Gonna wait and see if our opponent presents a larger creature. And then double Foundry with triple Warfare potentially. Also quite threatening. That's going to be another announcement. So opponent's getting two tokens here. Now do I kill Loam Speaker? Or do I keep Lightning Strike to go upstairs since it can potentially deal six damage by itself? That's probably better. Impulse, nice too. Alright, so Squee's going to end up trading for... Two tokens, most likely. Could also Lightning Strike to destroy one to keep Squee in play. Or I could Impulse. And then maybe even find an End of Festivities, which would be amazing here. Wiping the opponent's board. Alright, a land Lightning Strike, still great. So, now if I were to just play Warfare... Next turn I can burn the opponent out with double lightning strike. Don't have to play warfare main phase here since our opponent's likely chumping anyways. So let's attack with the swift spear, see what happens. Opponent chumps. That's fine. And then I'll still play warfare. 
And yeah, hopefully Podon doesn't have a way to gain life or destroy my enchantments. And then double lightning strike is gonna be game over. Platoon dispenser to immediately draw a card, that's fine. So the ground is very much stalled. Good thing we don't need to attack anymore to win the game. And we even found a Kumano which also deals a bunch of damage by itself. But yeah, 6 damage for 2 mana is a pretty good deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Good mix of creatures and removal. Double squee. Could still be helpful if our opponent answers the first one. Opponent mono green so far. And uh, Kumano means squee will enter with a plus one counter next turn. Not sure if End of Festivities is going to be very good against a green deck. They tend to have some very large creatures. Okay, Squeak can still attack into Tracker at least. So they will likely just eat the 1-1 one, one token. And then Lightning Strike can maybe deal with the Tracker next turn. Hopefully no Clay Champion here would be an 8-8. Looks like a Fight Spell, Tail Swipe. Okay, so we've lost our main threats. Tracker having Vigilance also very good against Red. Can play offense and defense. And another Tracker. So don't love how this is going. Warfare was a decent draw at least. So now I can play Warfare, Attack. I guess we're taking 8 on the way back at least. And the festivities deals 2 to all the opponent's creatures, that's not quite enough to deal with a tracker. Would be a way to finish off a tracker after they block a 1-1 token from Squee, at least. So maybe that's what we're trying to set up. Or I could play Squee attack, hope they block both Squee and Etching, and then and the festivities can finish both trackers. Yeah, that might be worth the shots. Since I don't think we're really outracing the 4-3 Vigilance right now. Okay, that worked. And then now, on a clean board, we might be able to leverage Warfare. Can maybe get back Squee from the graveyard. And Oddity can smash us for 4. At least Warfare means the 1-1 one -one gets past Pack Leader. And also now enables Lightning Strike to kill Oddity if needed. If our opponent takes 4, then they're not quite dead to a Lightning Strike for 4. So question is, do I need to kill Oddity now? I think I wait. Since if we get to untap with Phoenix Chick, we would have lethal next turn. And if they try and set up a fight spell, then uh, I can punish them. It's going to be another oddity, so that would be a lethal attack here. Opponent goes for it. And uh, I guess we might as well kill oddity over pack leader. Hope there's no trick. And then now we should be able to get back Squee from the graveyard. And I think that sets up lethal. Awesome. So very close game against Monogreen. I think that end the festivities turn was pretty key. Trying to trade for the trackers. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is pretty controlling, no creatures to apply pressure with. But we can hopefully protect our Chandra and then pull ahead with Impulse and Chandra providing card advantage. So I'll try it. Opponent blue-white soldiers. 
and an officer, so and the festivities is going to be pretty good in this game. Question is whether I want to impulse here for point place Athalia. That still plays into our and the festivities plan. If I impulse, I will make it awkward to play Chandra next turn as a drawback, since I'm likely going to have to cast whatever I exile. So I think I just wait, and I may not do anything this turn. Okay, Veteran means we can Lightning Strike the Veteran. So, and the festivities can still do its job. And then now Chandra. I could plus for mana and the festivities. Or I could just plus for mana do nothing. Although there are a few cards that punish me, since their opponent could put a plus one counter on officer, play another veteran, and then this might end up uh, being a dead card. Whereas I can actually protect Chandra now. So I think I'm going to play it safe, as opposed to trying to get more value. And hopefully our Planeswalker can pull us ahead. There's a Sky Strike Officer, also would have survived the one damage. Okay, so now I think I start with Reckless Impulse. Probably playing Foundry. And then I can always use Chandra for mana if needed. It's a little awkward here since Squeak can't attack. But I think I still play it out as opposed to exiling the top card. Although next turn it's not like I have much going on, so I could always play Squee. And if I find like a Lightning Strike here to kill officers, that would be great. Close call. I think I add for mana, play Squee. And that gives me more freedom next turn to potentially cast a bunch of spells. Officers can attack. And our opponent passes, probably with access to either counter spells or the reinforcements. I'm just gonna have to exile the top card here, hoping to find something useful. Phoenix chick, that's something. I can play it, animate foundry, attack. And our opponent's probably trading for foundry after drawing with the uh, Sky Strike Officer. Yep. They could also be more aggressive, try and preserve their board to next turn use the Veteran to put counters everywhere. They might also try and kill Chandra here, leaving them with enough power and toughness. All right, they do trade for Squee. And then the Sky Strike can draw on the way out. So don't love how this game is going so far, especially with three lines in hand. And our opponents got the uh, officer drawing them an extra card each turn. So wouldn't be able to survive that for very long. Another end of festivities could maybe come in handy here. As officer goes after Chandra alongside the reinforcements and theirs and the festivities. Could add mana if I wanted to. Let's say our opponent has the counter spell. I would have to pay four. Uh, so I can still pay for it without Chandra making mana. But it is also one damage. Is that worth it? I guess we'll uh, exile the top card still. Maybe find something more exciting. Just a mountain. At least we don't have to draw it next turn. So step one and the festivities. Can pay for a counter spell, no counter spell in sight. And then we can still squee. And smash. Opponent falls to seven. And uh, yeah, we're slowly improving our position here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Very close game against the blue white soldiers showing the importance of end the festivities as a one damage sweeper.
And we leveled up. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand could be pretty powerful with a third land here. Swiss Spear into Flame Breather, Double Warfare. We'll start adding up. Can trigger the Flame Breather as well. And then Chandra also becomes much more effective. Found our third land, put on black-white. So they might have ways of even destroying our enchantments. Turn to Adversary. Okay, just play Flame Breather and pass. And then next turn, if I play Warfare, the Swiss Spear can still attack into Adversary. Hopefully no Thalia, Duress also quite effective. Can take our Planeswalker or take a Warfare. And uh, Jetmere's Garden to play, that's kind of unexpected. Okay, now I could go Chandra plus Swift Spear, or even Chandra and then have mana for play with Fire. I think I prefer just resolving the Warfare for now. And then Swift Spear is fine to attack, and then next turn I could have a pretty explosive turn with Chandra. And the earlier we play Warfare, the more damage the Flame Breaker will deal as well. Opponent accepts the trade. Four mana. Hope to dodge shield it as always. It's gonna be a harvester. Okay. Is there a destroy evil in our future? A right of oblivion instead. Yeah, that's too bad. So we don't get to quite have our fun here. Festivities also would have been able to kill harvester. So instead now, I'm maybe looking at Chandra, plus four mana, play with Fire the Harvester attack. Make it more difficult for the opponent to flash back right on Chandra. And hope to find a third Warfare soon, but... Definitely not counting on it with only two left in the deck. So this is where opponent could play one of their haymakers at four or five mana to take over, especially if lifelink is involved. Yeah, Archangel of Wrath. Precisely what we did not want to see. Phoenix check the draw. So yeah, I think I need to find something pretty special here to get out of this mess. So Chandra probably goes digging. Kumano, the draw. So a Swift Spear into Kumano. And then I could end the festivities so Swift Spear can still attack. And then we would love to trade for the Archangel, but that's probably not happening. And then Archangel kills Chandra, and we get a turn to maybe attack back for a bunch. So Chandra down. Just when I was a good time. And a wedding announcement to make a 1-1. One -one. Okay, Lightning Strike. A little bit late to the party. At least Phoenix Chick gets a counter. Wouldn't be able to block Archangel, so we're just attacking. And then I wonder if I should just Lightning Strike here to enable Swift Spear. I guess we'll see if they want to block. Put on Chumps, so no reason to Lightning Strike now. Can maybe keep it to finish off Archangel if they block with it. Harvester, not bad either. Allows them to flashback right with a blood token to exile one of our permanents if they want to. Will cost them one life with uh, caves at least. Is your opponent exiling Phoenix Chick? If that works, I could kill it in response so it doesn't get exiled. Don't think that's worth it. And Archangel attacks. Okay, so let's do some math. Opponent's at 10, and they get an extra 1-1 one, one token. So what do I even need to draw to stand a chance? If I 
Let's say find a squee off the top. Kill Harvester end of turn, untap attack. Then opponent will be at 9 from the Flame Breather. Chump squee. Take 4, 5. Still probably not beating the Archangel anytime soon. Another end of festivities could maybe come in handy here. Lightning Strike could kill Archangel. That's probably the only realistic way to win this game, I think. So I'm gonna save the Lightning Strike. Alright, another Lightning Strike means we can potentially double Lightning Strike. For now, let's attack. I might be better off just killing the Harvester now. Or do we try and kill the Archangel? Opponent will get another 1-1 one, one next turn, most likely, as well as give the team plus 1 plus 1. If I kill Harvester now, they could jump Swiss Spear and still take 3, 4 damage total, down to 6. Attack with Archangel back up to 9. If I let them block, they might put Harvester in from a Swiss Spear, and then I will lose Swiss Spear even if I Lightning Strike. So maybe I'm better off just killing the Harvester here. Because yeah, otherwise they could also block Flame Breather. So I think that's kind of a forced play. And then hope they keep the Archangel back so we can finish it off. Okay, opponent passes, and a Reckless Impulse is a draw. That's another interesting decision here. Do I cast Impulse, hoping to find a land so I can still Lightning Strike? That seems worth it. If I just go to Combat Attack, they put Token in front of Etching, Archangel in front of Swiss Spear, maybe, although they could also block Flame Breather, in which case Lightning Strike's not enough. So I think we do Impulse. Finds play with fire and Chandra. So now what happens if I attack with everyone? Then they could put 2-2 two -two in front of Swiss Spear, block etching with Angel. I can kill my own etching to deny the life gain, opponent still survives. Or I could just attack with Swift Spear. And then if our opponent blocks with Archangel, I can finish it off, assuming no shenanigans. And then I probably don't attack with etching or flame breather. Sure. And then maybe Chandra can help us win a longer game. Opponent blocks with Spear, so we're forced to try and kill it here. Opponent will gain four life back. But at least a large life linker is gone now. Wouldn't be able to survive a second one. Opponent cycling tower is a good sign. Opponent passes, and now I can go Chandra plus Lightning Strike, if I want to. The sun, I'll light your way. Opponent could be sitting on a Wandering Emperor as well. <laughs> I'd love to. So let's say I Lightning Strike their face, they go to 2. Then we're in a very good spot to kill them next turn, even without attacking. Could also try and clear their blocker, but then Emperor is not as amazing for us. Opponent's at 2. And then I don't really see a reason to attack with my creatures. Upside is if our opponent has nothing, we get 1 point of damage in. And then Chandra by itself is lethal. If I attack, they have Wandering Emperor, what happens? They could grow the 2-2 two -two and then next turn, minus, and that's kind of a disaster. So I think I just pass. Opponent just had another Jetmere's Garden, that's fine. So yeah, if we find another non-creature spell, we might be able to end the game next turn. But another Archangel will quickly stabilize our opponent. Opponent passes, land the draw. And I uh, guess we'll exile the top card here. 
find a phoenix chick. But now it's probably less of a disaster if our opponent has a Wandering Emperor, although I would still prefer to avoid it. But if they have nothing, they would be dead. Opponent blocks Flame Breather, could see spot removal on etching. Voltage Surge, that's fine. Opponent falls to one. And I'll pass, I guess. Infernal Grasp does not do it, since her opponent loses two life and her opponent explodes. Yeah, the drawback of Infernal Grasp over Go for the Throat. Super close game here against Mardu Midrange. And the Archangel was very good, but ultimately not enough by itself. So yeah, this Mono Red Aggro definitely has some staying power. If it gets to untap with a Mechanized Warfare, it can do a ton of damage. But even without it, it's still capable of winning some longer games, thanks to the card advantage from Reckless Impulse and Chandra. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.